Hello everybody, this is Aiden and Dad, and... We're doing another Ken Life q and Woo! So I've been playing around with the clock wipe effect, and I've been noticing that sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And when it doesn't work, it's because the, the footage is the same, it's close to the same. But can you show us how to make it work? Let's find a spot where we can uh, cut. I, I want a dark spot like this. Just cut it here. And let's say we're going to jump forward a bit. There, that's fine. Okay, let's do that. Okay, I'm just going to zoom in till I see the seconds. Individual seconds up here. As always. And I want to do about two seconds of transition here. You'll see there's two there. Let's add one. We don't want to dissolve because I didn't specifically ask about this clock wipe. So that's this one. And you'll see if the starting clip is below the next clip. And the clip you transition from is below the one that you transition to. Like in this case. You'll see it works perfectly. And there's a good contrast between the two clips, so it wipes fine. The only thing you can improve on, which I like to do, is to put the softness here to around 5. See immediately what it does here. It softens this edge. Let's just look at it again. See there? A good value for that is anywhere between 5 and 10. 10, in my opinion, is a little bit much. It's a decent effect too. Whatever works for you. I like to keep it at 5. Okay, so that's easy enough, right? Now what happens if for some reason you can't put this clip above this one? If it's below. We'll use the same transition in between. I need this set for auto. So we can change it to video 3. Uh, to oh, that does give us that option for some reason. There we go. So let's see, we just leave it the same, right? And now you'll see what happens is it shows us immediately the new clip, the bulk of it, and it slowly wipes in the old clip. That's that's the wrong way around, right? We don't want that. So what can we do about that? There's these two additional boxes. Let's just say reverse transition. Check that one. Let's see what happens now. Now it does the right thing. It slowly wipes in the new clip. What wipes out the old clip, but the clock goes backwards. So that is still the wrong way around. So for that, we do this. We invert. We've covered this, these two checkboxes in previous video, but just to be sure that we get it again. So there's a good example of how to do the two different transitions with two clips that are very different. This, this one is very dark. Before the transition starts, this one is very light. And, and they don't look the same. That's the easy case. What Aiden's talking about is when these two clips look very similar. And let's look at that next. Okay, I've loaded two uh, new clips. This is from our Canon Live Q&A series. Uh, a previous one, you you might recognize it with the uh, multiple transitions we've done there. And here's a typical example. Let's just get back to... This is where we start rendering, as you can see. And I just want to get to the beginning of it. We can give it a few like that. And crop it back. This one is when the rendering is done. And you'll remember, I typically put... Um, clock wipes to 
to show that this is taking some time. So let's again start with the easy case. Let's zoom in a little bit here so we can see. Seconds again. There we go. So 52, 51, 50. So we can move this one to on that edge there. Then this one must be go be going there. Two seconds there. Add a transition. Do a wipe. Image file is the clock. Softness at five. Okay, let's see what this does. So you'll see this one. Just starting the rendering there. It's two minutes, 41 seconds in. Showing the bar there. And this clip is showing the finished six minutes there. Uh, and there's probably a time difference up there as well. Yes, see the time difference there. But there's not a whole lot of difference between this frame here and this one there. Okay, so let's see what, what, and you see the clock wipe, you, you might see a slight little difference here when I started, see there? And for the most part, you see now it goes, just went through there. And now it's gonna start doing the left of this part. You see what it's doing there? But that's just not nearly good enough. That's not satisfying at all. Now, one way I figured is you need to change one of these clips so that they are a little different. So that the one is darker than the other one. This my easy solution. Now, one way you can just do this is by adding a fade from black to one of them and you'll see it works out to be about two seconds that's exactly what we have here I just did it by eye so it doesn't have to be perfect and let's see what's happening now now you see it blackens out the one and it brings in the other one so that is okay Let's just see if we do it the other way around. Let's turn this one off and we'll do a, a fade from a fade to black, sorry, on the bottom one. Let's see what that does. So now you see it starts with a little better darkness, but it goes very dark in the end here. And then it goes there. So, so those are two rough ways to do that. But I'm going to show you yet a different way. I don't like this so much. This is too dark for me. The, the fade to black. The dark end of it is way too dark for me. I prefer something a little lighter. So there's at least one other thing that you can do. And you can do this brightness effect. Add few more keyframes so we have four because we want one year two year close together and another one at the end of the clip so let's just get this one in the right spot you'll see i just eyeball it like that that's fine let's bring that one to right next to it so these two stay at 100 but these two we want to darken a bit let's use 50. let's see how that that'll go so just half the lighting so what will this do just a little grayness is all I'm looking for here that's better already see there now the problem is obviously that flash from this gray to this color and so but the beauty of this is you can you can say instead of 70 here you can make this 90. so it'll start off with the grayness you can see well and it will lighten up slightly as it goes through and to make that jump a little less and we can even let's make this 95.
by the time it gets here, your brain is used to it doing the right thing. You see how little it is now? That's a much better way to do this, in my mind. Like that. Initially, before I knew about the other ways to do this, I, I used this. And it took me a while to figure this out, but uh, lately I've been using this kind of thing. And it doesn't have to be the brightness effect, There's, there are others. You don't have to do it on the top one, you can try it on the bottom one. You can turn it these numbers around to start light and end dark if you like. Different things you can play with here. Let's see if we put this one at the bottom. And we do it the other way around, if we can make a workable result here. Let's see, what's strong is it wipes in the old one. And so we need to at least do one of the two. I think we'll need to do both. Yeah, see now it turns it around. We need to do both anyways. So it starts darker, wipes out the old one, bring in the new one there. Perfect. Right, so in that video, Dad taught us how to use the clock wipe effect. If you like this video, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye! Bye!